Bush is there's going to be fights, and the press is going to turn on any incumbent president eventually. It's just a matter of time. The honeymoon lasts a month, three months, or four months, but it's going to end. Is this guy, this president coming into office, going to look good under fire? He hasn't really been under press fire yet. Uh, he may or may not. But back to the Bush model for one second. The Bush model was stonewall the press and then tell Bob Woodward everything. I don't know if that, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be the uh, the Obama model. Save but it there for has the book. Been, but you know, between uh, between Woodward and Ron Susskind, there has been more inside stuff about the Bush and Robert Raper. There's been more inside stuff about the Bush administration mm -hmm. than any we can remember. I don't think the same is going to be true with Obama. There's a kind of bifurcated thing I've noticed with him. He gets really ticked off when the press is is honing in on things he think, thinks is irrelevant, like Blagojevich. Uh, he's got all the time in the world for you if you want to talk to him about green energy, green jobs. Yeah. And, and I think that if we harp on things like Bl Blagojevich, you've already seen him get a little testy in, in a couple of these press conferences about that. Okay, uh, Caddy, uh, the press aren't beloved. Is he already just picking I'm a fight sure in the press room like Nixon did at this no, point? No, I don't think that picking fights with the press corps deliberately actually has ever really served presidents particularly well. I mean, we saw that with Bush to some extent after 9-11 when they deliberately kept the press corps out and uh, the press corps in that crisis time sort of played along. But then the press corps, having been kept out, turned with a vengeance on the president after Katrina. And you saw sort of pent-up frustration about how they'd been treated, then directing itself back against the president. So I don't think that, you know, deliberately deciding that you're going to alienate the Washington press corps helps. When is it important for the press to actually be difficult with the president, take on the White House press secretary, whoever it is, and really be combative? When do you feel you should really go step up to the line and say, Darn it, I got a job to do here. You're not letting me do it, which is to tell the truth to the public. Well, we better be doing that every day. That's that's I mean, that's where you start. I mean, right. that's that's the baseline of where you should start as but a reporter, a particularly a reporter. There's a White House because you have you know to about assume. No, we are the enemy. I mean, I think I think Nixon is right. That's what we are there to like write about what they don't want us to write about. And if we're not doing that, we're not doing our jobs. So but, there is there, there is an adversarial re relationship that has to be on. I think it has to but be adversarial. A, but there's a bright line here. It's really important for us to be appropriately skeptical and tough about matters of substance. One thing we learned in this last election that Obama knew from the start was that the public wanted a serious election. They were not interested in lipstick on a pig or all those <coughs> other sorts of diversions. If we use our office to pursue those stupidities, then we're going to be in the wrong. He's going to be able to exploit that. And this is a real serious time for the country. We have to be skeptical about the important things. Great. Essential discussions, not accidental discussions. Let's see what it all means. We asked the Matthews meter, 12 of our regulars, will Barack Obama's White House be more open than recent presidents have been? Well, the press isn't counting on change. 11 to 1, the meter says the Obama press shop will be just as cautious as others have been. John, Joe, and Kat, you're all with the media. Does anybody want to change their vote here? Or, Arlene, no. do you want to yeah. challenge you guys? All think it'll be a controlled operation where the president and his chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, decide what information to keep quiet and what to share. What? But, but I also, uh, Chris, I think it's really important, though, that, you know, that there's a difference between going to war with the press and being controlled in terms of how you deal with the mainstream media, which, by the way, is in is to, to much of the Obama team's advantage. We're in the lowest standing we've ever been in, you know, in terms of our credibility, our financial resources, all of that sort of stuff. On the other hand, they, I think, are going to talk directly to the American people. They understand the new media environment really well, and there are a lot of people in the country who want their information that way. That is a publicly legitimate way to okay. talk to people in a way that has not been true in the past. Okay, and here's the great. It's going to be that you know already with the appointment of something like Robert Gibbs, who's close to Obama in a way that Bush's press secretaries weren't. So Gibbs can't legitimately stand there in the press room and say, I don't have this information, I don't know. We know that he's part of that team. We know that he has access to the kind of information okay. that we want to Bottom get. line, will Barack have his discipline and operation in the White House as he's had on the road? I think he will try to. I'm not necessarily sure that he's going to manage it. Joe? Joe? The crucial thing here is that this guy can communicate much better than anybody we've seen in a long time. Doesn't need us as, us as much. Discipline? Absolutely not. Pretty close. Okay, before we break, a certain subtle tension does exist between the president and the press, and it's nothing new. In fact, it's only natural, but sometimes the tension takes on a life of its own. Richard Nixon and Dan Rather, then the White House correspondent for CBS, were well-known adversaries because Rather had been tough on Nixon. Nixon even tried to needle Rather during a press conference back in 74. Thank you, Mr. President. Dan Rather with CBS News. President. President. 
Are you running for something? <laughs> no, sir, Mr. President, are you? Uh, Ooh. <laughs> Love means never having to say you're sorry. Anyway, Bill Clinton has a notoriously short fuse that showed when he was announcing Ruth Bader Ginsburg for the Supreme Court. And Britt Hume, then with ABC News, asked this. The withdrawal of the Guineer nomination, sir, and your apparent focus on Judge Breyer and your turn, late it seems, to Judge Ginsburg may have created an impression, perhaps unfair, of a certain zigzag quality in the decision-making process here. I wonder, sir, if you could kind of walk us through it, uh, and perhaps disabuse us of any notion we might have along those lines. Thank you. I have long since given up the thought that I could disabuse some of you of turning any substantive decision into anything but political process. How you could ask a question like that after the statement she just made is beyond me. George W. Bush has been clear. He draws lines with the press. Here he was early last year in the midst of the Scooter Libby fiasco when a reporter pushed him on whether he'd okayed three others to leak to the press. And without commenting on the Libby trial, then, can you tell us whether you authorized any of these three to do not that or did they authorize it. without your permission? Yeah, thanks, Pete. I'm not going to talk about any of it. They're not under Thank investigation, though. Sir. Peter. I'm not going to talk about any of it. How about pardon, sir? Maybe we'll ask you might pardon not somebody. Not going to talk about it, Peter. <laughs> Do you like to think of another question? But let's be plain. Sometimes the blame does lie with the press. Sometimes we push the envelope. And while George Bush has gotten some tough questions hurled at him here at home, nothing can compare to that follow-up this past week in Baghdad. <laughs> when we come back, Senator Caroline...